Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today we're talking about courtship in the avian world. What's that all about? I wrote an article about this several years ago and I thought it was a good topic. Uh, this is that time of year where we're hearing the birds sing and we're seeing uh, colorful birds out there and then we get a lot of questions about that. So. Uh, did you have a favorite courtship method, method when you were dating? Were, did, you know, were you, did you sing to your would-be uh, uh, partner? Did you uh, have a favorite cologne or maybe perfume? A, a favorite uh, uh, outfit that you wore? Maybe it made your eyes pop, you know? And things like that. You know, those are all things that you can really translate into the wild kingdom out there. Well, maybe not the perfume part. Bird, birds especially don't do much with uh, pheromones like maybe insects do and, and some of the other wild animals, but, but the rest of the things do apply. So what are the keys to attracting a, a mate whenever you're, if you're a bird? Well, in the bird world, it's pretty much all up to the males. There are very few exceptions in which the females are, are the, the ones that do the mate attraction, but and for the most part, all the birds that we're really familiar with, um, are the males do all of the attraction. And first thing I thought we would talk about was song. Uh, because, when I, you know, it's funny because when I ask kids in, in, in the Nature Center world, who do you think is singing in the bird world? Most of the time they say the girls. Because girls, face it, girls generally have really good voices compared to a lot of us guys. But... In the bird world, it is the males who do most all of the singing. So, whenever we we think about um, using song to attract a, a, a mate, uh, you know, I, I the first bird that comes to my mind is the little house wren that we've talked about in the recent weeks. This bird is not super flashy, not a lot of color, not a lot, you know, he's not super colorful like the the cardinals and things are. But he is one heck of a songster. Uh, he sings and sings and sings, and that makes a big difference for him when it comes to mate attraction. And you know, if you go back and watch the, uh, the video I did a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, on house wrens, I also talked about him uh, you know, selecting sites and have multiple sites to show what a good provider he is, and that plays into it too. But he's one of the examples of the song, a songster that, that, that is really important to him to attract the female. So... Other ones that are pretty famous right now, sitting on the roof of uh, the house next door to me every morning, is at the peak of the roof is this male house finch, and he is singing up a storm. They sit up on almost every peak of the shopping center and here in the parking lot, you hear them singing, and they, they are pretty songsters. They used to call them Hollywood finches because they do have such a pretty song. But song is a really important part of uh, attracting mates and then you know taking songs and and, and songsters to uh, a, a new height are birds like the mockingbird the northern mockingbird not that super flashy not a trade he has flashy you know, white patches in his wings but really he's pretty you know gray and white not very not, not super flashy so but he is the ultimate songster they mimic other bird songs and they sing and sing and sing so song is a very important part to northern mockingbirds to attract their females and then a cousin to him uh, that is also a mimic thrush the, the, the brown thrashers you know, uh, sing hard to attract their females and they duplicate everything. So brown thrashers. So, but okay, so song is very, very important. Um, uh, now, but there are many other parts to courtship, right? Now, I was talking about, you know, did you have a favorite shirt that you used to wear when you went out the, uh, on the bar scene and everything else? Well, birds in the spring typically are molting into their flashy, uh, the breeding plumage and one of the ones that uh, uh, Carrie was just asked me about okay this is a yellow-bellied sapsucker in winter now this is a female but they, they get the idea that the col the colors are very muted the blacks are very muted and now uh, the red is very you know, spotty in there better camouflage for the winter months versus the breeding plumage of this yellow-bellied sapsucker, look how much brighter he is. He's the black blacks and the white whites and the yellow and the red reds. So he's dressed up for the spring because color and showing off is a very important part of attracting a mate. Uh, so plumage is really important. I don't think there's any better example that we know of um, than the American goldfinches. American goldfinches in winter. 
American Goldfinch in transition, the male bl blotchy just getting his yellow plumage, and then this stunning photo of, of a, a breeding plumage American Goldfinch. If you're that color in winter, you're an easy target for predators, but you want to be that flashy for the females to be able to attract them to you. Now, what are some of the other things in, in the color and appearance that make a difference? Well, everybody knows uh, the Northern Cardinal raising that crest. You know, sometimes you'll see those cardinals with those crests laid down. They, you know, they don't, not being very aggressive. But that crest being raised like that when he's singing, you know, that's part of making him look bigger and taller and, and more impressive and, you know, to attract a female. So uh, things like crest are important uh, for some species to show off. And one of the, my favorites are the, are the little kinglets, the tiny little kinglets. They, uh, this is a golden crown kinglet. And... When you're looking at that bird from underneath, you know you can't see that as well. But when he's in courtship, he'll he'll flare that little uh, gold and, and, and yellow crest up in the air because he wants to, you know, be handsome for the the lady. So um, there are those that parts of courtship, and then of course there's those displays that uh, hum, that birds do. And on the, the the first ones, and I wish I had a video to show you, but. The hummingbird, if you've ever seen a male ruby-throated hummingbird, you know, flashing that, that red gorget, but he also dances for the females. If you've ever been in the, out in your yard or somewhere and you've seen this hummingbird just zooping, zooming up and down around over, if you look somewhere close, there's usually a female sitting close nearby, and he does a kind of a, a horseshoe uh, flight for them, and, he, and he's doing this to impress her. Uh, so there's that courtship flight of the ruby-throated hummingbird, and there are other birds that have similar ones. One of the coolest ones I've ever seen was this bird. We don't see him in Missouri, but the bronze cowbird down in the desert southwest, I've watched those courting their females, and it's hilarious to watch. What the, the females are walking along on the ground, and he jumps up in the air, and he hovers, and he hovers right over her head. And he does circles and circles and circles, just flapping. And then he'll land, and yeah, yeah, he only, oh, no, and then he'll do a jump over, and he'll start hovering over again, and he'll land again. So there, there's several unique courtship displays but here in Missouri. None more famous than the greater prairie chicken. Uh, the members of the grouse family uh, typically do this, and they, they have dances that they do. They call them uh, leks that they perform on, um, and they used to, I mean, obviously these were widespread. So the, the prairie chicken doing his dance is booming, they call it, and they make wonderful sounds that can be heard over that open prairie, they say, from a mile, from a mile away. Uh, and when they get to, they, they get out here and the males do these dance, they puff up and they air sacks and they dance and the females come in and it, when they, the females come in, the males get really excited and they start flapping around and, and jumping up in the air and, and they're trying to impress the females and she'll select the one that she thinks is the most impressive. Uh, so a lot of competition. Sometimes there's 8, 10, 12 males out there, and there's one female comes along, and they all kind of go crazy. It's, it's a wonderful display of nature. So the Greater Prairie Chicken here in Missouri, one of the great displays uh, in nature, an example of that um, uh, that goes on. And, and there are other displays. One of, the, the, one of my favorite, quote, displays, of course, is uh, the, the loggerhead shrike, one of my favorite birds. It probably is my favorite bird of all time. But one of the things that they do is, to, to impress the female, is they have what's called a cash tree or cash bush. And they will collect insects, they collect uh, mice. These, these, these little guys are great at, uh, at killing small animals, uh, frogs, lizards, crickets, you know, all the, and they will uh, impale them on thorny bushes or barbed wire fences like this. And to prove to the females what a good provider they are, because they're not good songsters at all, their voice is really raspy, but They'll, they'll have a display of, of the food they've collected, and the females will go, wow, look, you're a good provider. You'll provide a lot of food for our babies. And so that's one of the ways that they impress the females. And the, the one that I did fail to mention here about sound, because, well, let's just put it in there, because people, it's not that popular right now for them. And that, of course, is drumming from woodpeckers. While they, they all have voices and they do have songs, one of the ways that woodpeckers uh, become uh, the impressed females is being the loudest, boldest bird in the forest. And that is hammering on good hollow limbs 
they get a good uh, rever reverberation or and they love to do that on gutters and metal flashings on your chimneys which is not very popular at 6 30 in the morning whenever you don't have to get up till seven so um but they're doing that this time of year and that's one of the re main reasons they drum is of course to attract the mate and then and of course it's the territory marking too but mainly it's to to prove to the females what a good uh macho male they are so Courtship in the bird world. It's a fun thing, and there's, there's many, many examples. Uh, I just tried to cover the topic, you know, especially for birds that we know locally and stuff. So um, it, it's a great topic of research if you want to. So great idea for a program. If you got any ideas, please send them in because we want to talk about what you want us to talk about. Give the videos a like, a share. If you're on YouTube, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, until then, come by. Let's talk birds.